Hi there, this is Virain and welcome back to my YouTube channel for another product management tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to be discussing a product development method known as Scrum. Let's get started. Let us begin by discussing the two most important kind of product development methods out there, Waterfall and Agile. Now in the Waterfall, as the name suggests, all the parts of the product development process, right from gathering requirements, planning, designing, building, releasing and monitoring. All of this is done basically step by step and uh, each of the step could probably take months. So you finish all the requirement gathering for the product once and for all. Then you move to planning. You do the planning once and for all, then you move to design. So basically at each of these steps, there is no scope of going back and changing the requirements one that, once that process is complete. And each of these phases could typically take months to complete. Well, whereas Agile is a little more flexible, where basically you do shorter cycles of this entire process, right from planning to releasing and monitoring, and you can keep coming back to the planning phase and keep reiterating on your product as you go along. Now, what are the examples where both of these are really helpful? Let's say you're building a, a phone and that's a product that you're trying to make. and when you're making a phone, you have to finish all the requirement gathering planning once and for all. You cannot have your phone developed and then go back and say, no, I want to change the requirement. So it's very important to finish all of these steps one after the other in, in this kind of a process. Whereas if you're trying to make an app, let's say product X, there you can basically do the requirement gathering planning. Uh, in shorter amounts of time, release something and then go back to the blackboard, gather more requirements and keep adding updates to your software. Now there are two kinds of agile development methods which are really famous and extensively used out there. The first one is called Scrum and the second one is Kanban or Kanban, doesn't matter. But in this video, we're going to be discussing Scrum. Let's get started. Let's say you wanted to make an app. Let's give it a name, Product X. Now to make product X, you basically need three kinds of people and teams on your side to make Scrum work. The first one is the product owner. The role of the product owner is to gather requirements from all possible stakeholders, whether it's your users, customers, executives, other team members, anywhere at all. And each of these requirements is basically written as a user story. A user story is written as, as a user, I want to be able to do this so that I can end up achieving something. Uh, one example of a user story is written right here. Now all of these user stories are basically combined and put together in something called a product backlog. Now the role of the product owner is to ensure that all the stories in this product backlog are the right ones to make this product awesome. So in general, he or she basically gives the product a direction. The next important team to make Scrum work is the development team. Now these are your developers, your testers, basically anyone required to build the product. The members of this team oftentimes manage multiple roles. Developers could be doing the testing as well. Testers could be doing development work and so on. Basically the goal of this team is to ship the product. Last but not the least, the most important part of the Scrum team is the Scrum master, often also known as a project manager in a lot of companies. Now this person's role is to ensure that the entire process of Scrum is being followed in the company. Uh, they monitor the progress, they make sure all the teams have everything they need to, to ship the product and basically they ensure that everything runs extremely smoothly and we can stick to the deadlines that has been assigned. Let us now look at how all of these teams come together to ship product X. It starts with the product owner. The product owner picks stories from the product backlog, which needs to go in the next release cycle. This is called the release backlog. From here, they prioritize the list of user stories into high, medium and low. So basically the team gets an idea of what is of uttermost important in the next release cycle. From here, the team starts adding time estimates to each of the user stories. This gives an indication of how much time it is going to take the team to finish each user story. And overall, this tells us how much time is going to be required to complete the next release cycle. Now the user stories from the release backlog is used to plan sprints during the sprint planning meeting. A sprint is essentially a short duration of time, typically anywhere between one to four weeks where the development team picks a set of user stories that they can ship at the end of the sprint. Your release cycles define the length of your sprint cycles. 
So if you have shorter release cycles, you will have shorter sprint durations. At the end of the sprint, if your team is not able to complete all the user stories, which is a cause for concern and it tells you that your project is not on schedule and something needs to be done. This is where the burn down chart comes into the picture, which is the single most important reason of Scrum's popularity. A burn down chart gives you a measure of the amount of work remaining in your current sprint. This is what the chart looks like. On the Y axis, you have the amount of time remaining to finish your sprint. It starts with the entire time that you've already recorded against each user story. Now as the day progresses, every member in the team working in any of the user story use any software to start logging the amount of work remaining for their user story to complete at the end of each day. Now at the end of the day when all the developers have basically logged their work, you get to know the amount of work done. The slope of this graph typically known as the burn down velocity will tell you the average productivity of your team in a given day which can be used to estimate the completion date of all the user stories in the sprint. You can also use this on any day of the sprint to understand if you're behind or ahead of schedule and if you're behind schedule it gives you an idea of what needs to be done to come back on schedule. A burn down chart is the most conclusive proof of whether your project is on track or not. One of the most important meetings in the scrum process is the daily scrum or a daily stand up meeting which basically lasts for about 15 minutes where each member of the team talks about their progress from the previous meeting the problems that they are stuck at and the plan for the day this is essentially used to track down any problem that's happening within the team which could affect the completion date and remove all the obstacles immediately at the end of each sprint a sprint review meeting is done where the team basically shows the product owner all the user stories that have been completed a sprint retrospective meeting is also used to see what are the challenges that was faced during the sprint and what can be done to improve the processes within the company so this is what a scrum workflow looks like typically beginning at the product backlog and then where the product owner makes the release backlog and then sprints are planned by the entire team Once each sprint begins there are daily stand up meetings where the plan the progress and the problems are discussed and at the end of the sprint a sprint review and a sprint retrospective meeting is done to improve the process overall and with that we come to the end of this video i hope i was able to explain the scrum process to you and if you have any doubts do reach out to me in the comment section below and i will get back to you if you like the video hit the thumbs up button and do subscribe to the channel for more such product management videos thank you